Welcome back to the AI Breakdown. Today, we are talking about WorldCoin. It is an ambitious and controversial project to establish proof of personhood and to pave the way for a global UBI, and its context is, of course, the new era of artificial intelligence that we're living through today. The question, however, is whether WorldCoin actually solves a set of problems created by AI, or whether, as some are arguing, it's part and parcel of a growing dystopian hellscape. WorldCoin was founded three years ago and has been subsequently in a beta period. However, today, the financial network that is part of it has gone live, and so much of both the crypto world and the AI world are talking about it. Their announcement reads, If successful, we believe WorldCoin could drastically increase economic opportunity, scale a reliable solution for distinguishing humans from AI online while preserving privacy, enable global democratic processes, and eventually show a potential path to AI-funded UBI. In a thread on Twitter, Sam Altman, who is a co-founder of WorldCoin in addition to his work on OpenAI, writes, the goal is simple, a global financial and identity network based on proof of personhood. This feels especially important in the AI era. I'm hoping WorldCoin can contribute to conversations about how we share access, benefits, and governance of future AI systems. So WorldCoin is actually a couple parts. At core, it involves establishing a unique identifier based on scanning one's irises. This creates a world ID, which is unique and can't be spoofed again. In other words, each person on Earth can have one and only one world ID, and things that are not human, who don't have eyes to be scanned, cannot create world IDs. Now, part of the incentive for scanning one's irises is that people who do so get a distribution of the WLD token, which just went live. The current value of the amount of token that was distributed to people who had their eyeball scanned is around $60 US, assuming it was liquid enough to actually exchange that for dollars should people so want. So there are kind of two different problems generated by AI that this is playing around with. One is how to prove people are people and not bots. The second is how to support people in a world where many of the jobs, if not most of the jobs that are done today, can be done more efficiently by artificial intelligence. There's certainly been no shortage of discussion around universal basic income schemes stemming from job loss that people assume will come from AI. Of course, this was the entire premise of Andrew Yang's insurgent presidential campaign in 2020. The fundamental pillar of that campaign was something that he called a freedom dividend, a monthly payment to every American adult that was meant to supplement their income in the face of assumed job loss from automation. Now, Andrew Yang didn't win, but his ideas got a bit of traction. And of course, this was all pre-ChatGPT and the rise of generative AI, where the conversation has done nothing but increase. An essay from May in the Atlantic says, Before AI takes over, make plans to give everyone money. The U.S. needs policies now to support workers made redundant by artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is coming for all our jobs, the piece writes. That is a prevalent fear these days and not one easily dismissed. The specific effects of revolutionary technologies are impossible to predict, and perhaps AI will turn out to be overhyped. But it really is different from past advances. The work it can do really is different. The job it threatens really are different. Its effects on the labor market might really be different. A pair of economists at Goldman Sachs recently estimated that two-thirds of American occupations are now exposed to AI-driven automation. In the coming decade, the technology will wipe out 300 million jobs, they forecast. That's one in every 11 jobs on the planet. The piece continues. Here in the United States, an AI jobs revolution need not be anything for average wage-earning families to fear. If AI does not enslave the human race or destroy humanity outright, this generative technology can and should be a very, very good thing. It should lift productivity growth, increase our national wealth, and contribute to our commons of knowledge. Every person in this country can and should benefit from such an awe-inspiring invention. The problem is that we do not have any policies in place to support workers in the event that AI causes mass job loss. And of course, the rest of the piece goes on to articulate a vision of UBI and how it might work. Now, so far, the UBI aspect of WorldCoin is a little bit harder to understand exactly how it's going to work. Indeed, even in the announcement, they say eventually show a potential path to AI-funded UBI versus really articulating how that might work. Coindesk columnist David Z. Morris writes, in just one of many missing premises around WorldCoin, it is unclear how the WorldCoin token can be expected to have any value for recipients once it circulates. It's extremely difficult to imagine how what amounts to an Ethereum-based meme coin with no apparent tokenomic model is going to be exchangeable for essentials like food and shelter over the long term. Now, this was written before the launch of WorldCoin today, which came with a tokenomics announcement. But the tokenomics that were revealed aren't necessarily impressing people either. The DeFi investor writes... WorldCoin is another VC-backed project with predatory tokenomics. WLD already has an insane fully diluted valuation, $27 billion, but less than 1.5% of the total supply is currently in circulation. The project might have potential, but I strongly advise staying away from its token. 
Now, for those of you who aren't that familiar with crypto, fully diluted valuation refers to the idea that you can just multiply what the price is of a token by the total number of tokens that will be created all time, even if only a tiny fraction of those tokens are actually circulating. The problems with this are numerous. One, it basically just serves to make things look more valuable than they actually are. Two, even in the context of the price of the tokens that are circulating, it's very rare that with a new unestablished project, you're actually going to get that price if you tried to, for example, cash it out or trade it, because liquidity is usually so light that any attempt to sell en masse is going to actually impact the price and drive it down. And importantly, fully diluted valuation, or FDV, has a history of being used in the last cycle as a way to juice the value of projects in a way that rewarded the early investors, but ultimately left, but ultimately left retail holding the bag. Given how little has been said so far about the UBI aspect of this project, it might be worth shifting over to just focus on the other dimension of this. And that's the idea of proof of personhood. Going back to David Morris, he writes, The UBI element of the project is simply window dressing for its real goal, solving the problem of digital identity. And this really does feel like what WorldCoin's core focus is. For people who are supporting WorldCoin, it seems to be largely about the importance of attempts at the proof of personhood problem. Bankless's David Hoffman writes, Valid attempts at a decentralized proof-of-personhood protocols are invaluable. Worldcoin investor CoinFund wrote, Worldcoin started with the question, how do we prove human uniqueness in a digital context and do so while retaining anonymity and privacy? There are a number of reasons for this question, but one that truly spurred the need was how to disambiguate AI from humans as AI improves. Ethereum creator Vitalik Buterin wrote extensively about this in a blog post today called What Do I Think About Biometric Proof-of-Personhood? In that post, he wrote, one of the trickier but potentially one of the most valuable gadgets that people have been trying to build is a decentralized proof-of-personhood solution. Proof-of-personhood, aka the unique human problem, is a limited form of real-world identity that asserts that a given registered account is controlled by a real person and a different real person from every other registered account, ideally without revealing which real person it is. Vitalik goes on to describe the philosophy behind WorldCoin as... AI is going to create a lot of abundance and wealth for humanity, but it also may kill very many people's jobs and make it almost impossible to tell who even is a human and not a bot. And so we need to plug that hole by one, creating a really good proof of personhood system so that humans can prove they are actually humans, and two, giving everyone a UBI. Now, when it comes to WorldCoin's specific approach to this problem, Vitalik identifies four big risks. One is privacy. Obviously, scanning one's irises comes with privacy concerns, especially when it's an individual who's actually doing it and checking the database to determine whether a person already has a world ID. Another problem that Vitalik points out is accessibility. Are there enough orbs for people to actually get to them easily? A third is a question of security and hacking. And a fourth and a big one is centralization. Vitalik writes, the orb is a hardware device and we have no way to verify that it was constructed correctly and does not have back doors. Hence, even if the software layer is perfect and fully decentralized, the WorldCoin Foundation still has the ability to insert a backdoor into the system, letting it create arbitrarily many fake human identities. Now, in the same post, Vitalik does point out that it's important to distinguish between issues with WorldCoin's approach to this problem, issues with any generally biometric approach to the problem, and issues that any approach to the problem will have in general as well. Unlike many on Twitter, Vitalik doesn't come away cynical, but he also certainly doesn't make a ringing endorsement of WorldCoin's approach to the problem. If you're interested in a more in-depth look of some of the critiques around both the privacy dimension of this as well as the tokenomic dimension, go check out the main breakdown today, which you can get a link to at breakdown.network. I will say when it comes to the artificial intelligence side of this conversation, it feels like if nothing else, this is a good moment to start asking the questions in a more vociferous way around how to deal with economic fallout of AI. There are a huge number of assumptions embedded into WorldCoin that are worth pushing on, if not outright challenging. Is UBI, for example, really the right approach to AI job displacement? Should instead those efforts be focused on reskilling, retraining, adapting to new environments? And when it comes to proof of personhood, how urgent is that problem really? Perhaps a better question, in what context is it an urgent problem? And what are the trade-offs of other solutions as well? How do those trade-offs compare to the trade-offs inherent in WorldCoin? At the end of the day, I do not fault people for trying to push forward on areas of global import that don't have enough conversation yet, and that people see as big problems in need of solutions. I try to assume good faith until otherwise proven wrong. But if the AI community wants to see WorldCoin as anything, I suggest we see it as an invitation to a conversation. It's a conversation that needs more voices than just the crypto community, as much as I love them, or people who work on OpenAI as well. So to the extent that these problems matter to you, let's dive into it. 
As always, you can find a link to our Discord in the show notes. And if nothing else, come join the conversation there. For now, I want to say thanks again for listening. And until next time, peace.